Stop beating yourself up. Stop your negative thinking. Stop criminating yourself. Stop judging yourself. Let go of the pain and the harsh negative junk judgments. When are you going to get yourself out of this crazy cycle of self-loathing and condemnation? What are you doing? Isn't the world a hard enough place to live in without you in the privacy of your own mind condemning you? The other day I went to meet the people at the campsite. Yeah, the people at the campsite. And I realised I'd forgotten my car keys because I'd left my car keys over at the campsite. Yeah, the campsite, car keys, car was at the campsite. I'm like, when I realised that I'd forgotten the car keys when I was halfway across the field, the way I spoke to myself in my own head was like, like well, I'll do it. I went, oh, fucking hell, like that. I didn't say it, but that's like, I thought it. Oh, fucking hell, you forgot. And then I immediately thought, bloody hell, mate, you're being tense, aren't you? If I only forgot some car keys, it's not... You're at the end of the world, this is a small matter. I quietly <sighs> let go of the idea and I walked gently back to my house and got the car keys and recognised, wow, still deep within my coding, I have personified some of the voices that went into my childhood and I have embodied them. I've made them me. I have personified external negativity. This is why as parents we have an obligation to be very loving and n nourishing to our children because they will embody and imbibe not just what you tell them but primarily what you show them. If you talk to yourself in a negative way, if you think in a negative way, it's likely you were instructed to do this at some point in your life. How to get over negative thinking, how to stop beating yourself up, Yes, I could give you a lot of flannel and claptrap about, you know, recognising you're worthy of love. There's nothing wrong with you. You're exactly as how God made you and all that stuff. But, excuse me, I had to move in the chair there. My knee was wedged in there and I can't talk about self-love and have an iron bar pressed into my shin like I'm in a Cambodian concentration camp. I don't know what they did in there. I imagine it was a lot harsher than an aluminium bar up in the shin. As I understand it, many, many people were brutally, brutally murdered, millions upon millions. The point remains this. It goes beyond loving yourself because, in a sense, I always try to look for, and this might be something you might want to try as well. I thought I, was, I felt like my own nan then. Excuse me, dear. Oh, what's that? Get that off you. Um, I, I'll pick that up in a minute. Don't think that someone else has to do that. I'll do it, right? There is some seeds of wisdom even in their moments of condemnation, i.e. in drug addiction, I came to realise that the idea of getting off your face, getting out of yourself, the impulse is to destroy the self, but which self? Not the host anatomy, not the self that is the awareness, the self that is the construct. So negative thinking, this sort of inner loathing of the individual, there's some sort of truth in it. Let me take the rather prosaic example of me being harsh on myself for forgetting the keys there. There's part of me that doesn't want to be a persona anymore, that doesn't want to be Russell with Russell's history and Russell's desires and Russell's failings and flaws. It's part of me truly wants to transcend it, as a Buddhist friend of mine says of herself, die you bitch! Meaning, you know, transcend and overcome this egoic persona. Unless she was talking to me. She may have been talking to me. No, she was talking about herself. Like, and this negative thinking is a misdirected, i.e. cultureless or sort of pathless impulse. This is what I think is the problem of our materialistic, individualistic, commodified times, is that there's nowhere for our spiritual impulses to go. Well, there is somewhere for our spiritual impulses to go. Objectification, consuming, dumb, stupid, cultural ideologies, shallow and stripped of tradition, stripped of all meaning. No, we need to recognise that that impulse, self-loathing, like Eckhart Tolle says, you know, when his, his own uh, awakening came in the form of the realisation, I cannot live with myself any longer. That was the day of his epiphany. That was the day of his awakening. I cannot live with myself any longer. Who are the two people? Who is the I? Who is the self that I cannot live with? Forgive the Eckhart Tolle impersonation, um, but I had to do it to make my point. So 
the negative thinking, I believe, whether it's me or you or any of us, is a recognition that there is a witness, a deep heart witness. And indeed, the recovery from the negative thinking, the beating yourself up, the sort of mental self-harm comes from this pathway, recognizing that you are not the negative thought. You are the awareness. See, I think things still that I think are unbecoming of a man as far down the path as I am now. But then I realise, of course, I still think dumb stuff. Of course, I am selfish. But now what I tend to think is, ah, look at Russell. Russell is being selfish. Ah, look at Russell. Russell is being fearful. Instead of wearing the garments of Russell, instead of being obsessed with the identity of Russell, instead of being enveloped in the uh, gauntlets of my own identity, some warped loyalty to my own history. When I spoke to Muji, even about the kind of uh, powerful events in his early life, which led to the death of his sister as a result of injuries that she received in the uh, police custody that led to the Brixton riots. And I talked to him about that time. He said, I have no identification with that person no more. I remember it and stuff, but I don't feel like it's me. I have a lot of self-identification still. I still feel like the child that I was. There are aspects of my life and episodes of my history which I think like, God, how did, what was all that? How did that all happen? Heights of celebrity, those kind of things. But I recognise that all of the ingredients, all of the components that, in, that are required to live a bad life are in me. I recognise I have greed, selfishness, self-obsession, self, all of those, that's all in there. But now, because of this surrendering to the awareness, I no longer identify immediately with my own my own impulses. I tell you a good film you should watch is that Mr. Rogers film starring Tom Hanks and Matthew Reese. There's a bit where, spoiler alert, Matthew Reese's journalist character is digging out uh, Tom Hanks who is playing Mr. Rogers and you see that there's a moment where Mr. Rogers who is the subject of the uh, article in the fictionalized or not yeah, fictionalized reality of the film because he is so famously nice so kind seemingly without malice or selfishness and you see after a moment of goading it flash through tom hanks and what better actor to play such a man you see it flash through him like a, a moment of oh f knock you out but you see how he deals with that feeling of how he sort of observes it and turns it into gratitude this is not denial of the self you know, we don't want people to repress who they are, who we really are. Say if you feel rage or you feel lust, you don't go, oh shit, I don't feel that. You instead think, oh, I am feeling this thing, what it is to be alive and to have a body and to be in the world. We needn't yield to it. The negative thinking that you are experiencing is the beginning of your awakening. It is the jet fuel you need to take you to your enlightenment and you must mobilize it and utilize it or live on the lower planes for all reality. Human life is an opportunity for you to ascend beyond materialism, individualism and the low cultures of your low civilization. The time of materialism and commodification that we happen to have been born into. But within you there is deep truth. Within you there is the potential for awakening and realization and it is continually in communion with you, talking with you even now. If you can hear these voices, if you can hear them without responding egoically to their suggestion, then you have a chance at transcendence, i.e. if when I hear, wow, you forgot them fucking car keys, when I hear that voice, I can go, there's that thing, instead of, oh yeah, that's me. There are many, many people in here, like there's many, many people in there, many, many things trying to realize themselves. As with quantum physics, the electron is here and there and both and neither, a super state of potentialities. This is God, all potential simultaneously possible, all reality simultaneously realized. To overcome the negative thinking, hear it, but do not identify it with it. This is not something you will be able to do on day one, but if you continue to practice it, if we continue to practice it, then perhaps we'll get somewhere together.